pray with you. God of all truth and wisdom, you have brought us to this day in your grace. We give you thanks for these students and the families represented here. As we celebrate the milestone in our lives, we ask you to establish the work of our hands by your spirit, that through all our endeavors we might love as you have loved us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, I'm Dick Merriman. I'm the president of Southwestern College and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our ceremony this afternoon. Let me take a moment and just say, we've had two ceremonies here already today for undergrads with bigger crowds. That's why the room is set this way. If you would rather not sit in the bleachers, if you want to improve your position in life and sit down here on the floor, let's take a minute and let you do that. If anyone would like to move down, please, please help yourself. No takers. Okay. You're happy, I'm happy. Okay. It's good to have you here. It's my pleasure now to introduce Dr. James Shepard, the college provost. He will introduce our speaker for today. Good afternoon. It is really a, a delight to introduce Dr. Vince Evans to you. Uh, he's the director of special services at Derby Public Schools, but not too long ago, graduates, he was sitting exactly where you are. Vince is the first recipient of Southwestern College's doctoral degree. So when you listen to him, you'll be listening to the success that you're about to have. Welcome, Dr. Evans. No pressure there, right? Good afternoon to everyone. Before I get started, I would like to go ahead and take just a moment to thank all of our family members and friends that have come out to support us today. We are very appreciative of you. And graduates, I need your assistance with this one. So please go ahead and stand up for me. Don't be shy. I would like for you to go ahead and take a look around and find who might have come with you here today, be that friends, family, and if you're here solo, that's okay too. You can visualize the people that helped you through this journey, but please do look around, find those folks, stay standing for just a moment while you're facing them. I'll give you a moment, don't be shy, track them down. I know there's some proud mamas out there on Mother's Day too, we want to locate them. I was thinking about these folks on my drive over. Because when I was completing my last degree, there were times where I was over-caffeinated. There was times where I was sleep-deprived. There was times when I was up in the middle of the night working on my upteen millionth revision of my dissertation, or at least it felt that way. And my lovely wife, Shonda, who's here today, was supportive of me throughout that process. Even when I was not in the best of moods, she was still there for me. She supported me. She guided me, she loved me, and I know these fine folks have done the same thing for you throughout this process. So, before we move forward, I think that you all owe all these fine folks a round of applause. <laughs> Graduates, please go ahead and have a seat. Traditionally, this would be the time in a commencement speech where there's a really awful joke, and I don't want to break tradition, so here we go. If everyone could just go ahead and get their groans ready, I would appreciate it. There once was a farmer, the farmer was out, and he was milking his cow, and a fly came along, and the fly was buzzing, buzzing, just incessant, would not leave him alone. He was swatting at it, he could not get it to stop. But the fly eventually decided to go ahead and buzz right into the cow's ear, where it did not return from. Now the farmer thought nothing of this, went about his business milking the cow, and eventually, to his great surprise, along with a stream of milk, out came the fly into the pail. There's a message that we can take away from this story, and that's that even when you have a motivated speaker, sometimes the fly goes right in one ear and out the udder. Thank you, folks. I'll be here all night. The 8 o'clock show is completely different from the 5 o'clock show. 
The reason for that joke is because when I thought back to my graduations and my graduation, my graduation ceremonies and my commencement speeches that I've sat through before, that's happened five times for me. Five different degrees, five different ceremonies, five different commencement speakers. And do you know how much I remember from any of them? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I remember not a single word of that. I was trying to reflect and think why that might be. Here's what I've come up with. When I was getting my undergraduate degree, my bachelor's, I was sitting there, and the commencement speaker was doing, doing his or her absolute best. See, I don't even remember if it was a he or a her, but whoever they were, I'm sure they were trying hard. But I had other things on my mind. I was an extremely studious sixth-year senior in a four-year program. It was about 11 o'clock in the morning, and I was thinking, it is celebration time, and I know there's got to be a bar in this town that's open somewhere. Now, since then, I've matured a little bit, gotten a little older, a little wiser, made some better decisions. But still, during those master's degrees, I don't remember what the commencement speech was. I think during that time, my line of thought was probably, I sure have worked hard through this process. I'm ready for this to be over. I wonder how long this person is going to speak. For those of you out there that are wondering the same thing about me, the answer is not very long. We are nearing completion on this one already. Then there was my doctoral degree, and I remember this one quite well because it happened recently right in this building, and I remember exactly what I was thinking while the commencement speech was going on. I was thinking in my head, this fine institution has been open since 1885, and I am its very first doctoral graduate. And whatever, whatever happens when I walk across that stage, I cannot trip and fall on my face. <laughs> and I didn't. And neither will you if you are out there thinking that right now. I've got cat-like reflexes. I'll hop on up. I'll get you. You're going to be okay. So let that one go. No fear. I may not have remembered anything that those commencement speaker, speakers said. And you might not remember what I have to say here today. But I would ask you to take just one thing away from this speech. So does everybody have their listening ears on, graduates? I only want one thing from you. I want you to remember this message. You are rich. That has multiple meanings. I've got a couple quick examples. First off, there's a traditional sense that we think of when we think you are rich. I spoke with my lovely wife earlier. She is a principal in a highly impoverished school of students who are three and four years old. Lots of struggles, lots of challenges. Recently, a young man, four years old, was having a discussion. He was working with a teacher one-on-one, -on -one, and he asked her this question. He said, teacher, are you rich? And she looked at him and said, no, I'm in education. But he was kind of like that fly. He wasn't ready to go away yet. And he said, do you have a car? And she replied, yes. And he continued, do you have a house? And she said, well, yes. And he asked, do you have food to eat? And she said, sure, I've got food to eat. And he looked at her and he said, teacher, you are rich. Out of the mouths of babes. I think sometimes we get stuck in this middle class mindset and mentality and we figure, forget how much better we have it than other people all over this world. Through this process, by earning this degree, I don't know if you realize this yet, but your earning power has increased even more than it already was. You are rich. That's not all rich means to me, though. Recently, I heard a wonderful interview with Chris Rock. And no matter what you think about Chris Rock's comedy, I think we can all agree that he knows a thing or two about being rich. They were interviewing Mr. Rock as he was getting ready for a Broadway show. And they asked him, Chris, what's it mean to you to be rich? And he said, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, for me, being rich is not about money. He went on to say, I've worked hard all through my career, and at this point I have choices. I can decide whether I want to do stand-up or TV or movies or Broadway shows. I am rich with options. And graduates, whether you realize it or not, you now have additional options in your life. You are rich. I think back to every class I've taken. 
every bit of information I've gained, every student and professor I've met and added to my network, every diploma that I have earned. It's made me a richer person. Regardless of how you look at it, regardless of the definition, I feel richer. And you leave here today richer as well. You are rich. In closing, as a Southwestern alum, as a current Southwestern faculty member, on behalf of all of my friends that are up here today, we want to wish you nothing but the best moving forward. We wish you a very rich life. Thank you. Mr. President, the following candidates have been examined by the faculty and are deemed worthy of admission to a graduate degree. Mr. President, I present Master of Accountancy, Rena Menga Mordet. Mr. President, for the degree Master of Arts in Theological Studies, I present to you Alexander I. Munoz. Mr. President, for the degree Master of Business Administration, Nicholas Bradley Morris. Richard Southern. Deborah Ann Jenkins. Chi Bui Mr. President for the degree Master of Teacher Education Jun Mei Wang Xiao Wu.
Wen Wen Yu. Yan Chen. Lisa Yang. Ying Ya Chi. Jacqueline Teresa Helmers. Chelsea Haley. Cassandra Leanne Grieve. Karen Mary Hungate. Anna Marie Rawlings. Loretta Waldrup. Harry Mount. Christina Marie Fullerton. Jan Marie Van Fleet. Robin Ferguson. Donna Pearson McClish.
Christina K. Sims. Marisol Demari Santiago. Jonetta Monique Porter. Mr. President, I present to you candidates for the degree Master of Science in Leadership, David A. Polk. Amanda June McKimson. Michael D. Daniels. Mr. President, I present to you candidates for the degree Master of Science in Management, Christopher B. Allen. Marshall Thomas Grace. Dale Miller Pratt. Mr. President, I present to you candidate for the degree Master of Science in Security Management, Douglas J. Barrett, Jr. Mr. President, I present to you candidates for the Degree Doctorate of Teacher Education, Cindy Louise Lawson.
Christine Ann Rodriguez. Lamont M. Smith. William Harold Wilson. Mr. President, I present to you the graduate class at Southwestern College of 2015. It's a little bigger deal than that. Let's try again. Let's hear it for these graduates. Congratulations, well done, and best wishes from Southwestern College. It's my pleasure now to call on Martin Rood. He's going to lead us in singing our alma mater. If you'll stand with me, we are rich. We are utterly rich <laughs> and rich in tradition. And one of our traditions and the, and the dearest is the singing of the alma mater. So if you're not familiar with the words, they're printed. Please join me in singing. Far above the Walnut Valley, on a lofty height, stands a noble alma mater, bathed in golden light. Lift the chorus, speed it onward, over hill and dale. Hail to thee, beloved Southwestern, alma mater, hail. Tour above the stir and bustle of the busy town. Reared against the art of heaven, look she calmly down. Lift the chorus, speed it onward 
over hill and dale. Hail to thee, beloved southwestern, alma mater, hail. To the heights she calls us daily, alma mater dear. Heights of knowledge, hope, and courage, free from doubt and fear. Here we go. Lift the chorus, speed it onward, over hill and dale. Hail to thee, beloved southwestern, alma mater. Now, would you all receive this benediction as we go forth from this place? May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the love and the knowledge of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us now and remain with us always. Go in peace. Amen.